guys and welcome to Urban Treats. Today we have my good friend and master baker Balash Borzon with us and he's going to show us how to make traditional village bread with sourdough. Balash, welcome to Urban Treats. Thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. It's great to have you here. Balash, uh, this is a sourdough recipe and I know you had to do some preparation like almost eight days before, right? To prepare the sourdough. Yes, exactly. What is it you have to do? It's a very simple thing. It's a, uh, the sourdough is a combination of water and flour, and uh, we have a, a long fermentation process. Mm -hmm. uh, eight, ten, eight, eight to ten days. Eight to ten days. Wow, yeah. wow. But I actually prepared the sourdough at home, so we didn't have to do it here. But we have a link to the recipe right in the description, along with the ingredients. Are we ready to get started? Absolutely. Then let's get started. Our first step into making this great bread is to autolyze the flour and the water. Autolyzing is a process that would help develop gluten, which in turn is going to improve the texture of your bread. Simply sift the flour and combine it with the water, and using a dough hook, knead until well combined. Now cover with a kitchen towel and let it rest for 30 minutes. Next we're going to add our sourdough starter. For a full recipe on how to make sourdough starter, make sure you check the description. And using our dough hook, we are going to net until it's well combined. If the texture might seem a bit runny at this point, don't worry, it's going to tighten up as soon as we add the salt. Before we move to the next step, prepare your resting bowl with a couple of tablespoons of olive oil. The next step is definitely my favorite. This is your chance to release any pent up anger of the week. And this is called the slapping process. Lightly oil your dough and working surface, and then smack it on the counter, roll it back up, and repeat. Continue to physically abuse the dough for five to six minutes this will help it develop more gluten and will give you a nice rise in bubbles when you bake it. And now it's time for another 30 minute rest. Our dough is already rising and bubbling up. And after a 30 minute rest, we are ready for our first fold. You can lightly oil your hands to make it easier to work with the dough. And then carefully try to remove the dough without flattening it. Because we're working with a heavy type of flour, the dough is definitely going to be sticky. So lightly flour your working surface, but don't use too much flour. Carefully pull the dough out into a rectangle. And then we're going to fold it in the middle and tightly but carefully roll it into a loaf. And then we're going to place it back into a bowl and let it rest for another 30 minutes before we go to the second folding process. The second fold is a little bit lighter, so we're not going to pull it out as much as we did in the first time. And we're going to fold it twice in itself, and during every fold slightly massage it out. And roll it up and tuck under the edges. And the dough goes back in the bowl for another 30 minute rest. For our third and final fold, we're going to carefully fold the dough in the bowl. 
And you do that by grabbing the edge, carefully pulling it up, and then folding it over itself. Repeat with all four edges, and then flip around so that the flat side is upwards. And now we will give the dough a long rest before we start the shaping. We are making two loaves, so we're going to cut the dough in half. Make sure your working surface is slightly floured, but don't use too much flour because that won't allow you to put the tension that you need into the dough. There are different ways you can shape the dough into long or round forms, but last is showing us how to make a long form. Fold over the top corners, roll them over and then using your palm, lightly push them back forward. This will put tension in your dough surface and will allow the bread to rise nice and evenly. Line your proofing basket with the kitchen towel and carefully place the loaf into it. If you have any disconnected edges, just slightly pinch them together with your fingers. Now it's time for our final proofing. And for that you have two options. You can either let the dough proof for two to three hours in a warm place and then bake it, or you can place it into the fridge where you have to leave it for at least 15 hours. Now we found that the best way to bake your loaf is in a ceramic dish with a closed lid, because that will keep all the moisture in and will allow it to bake really nicely. If you don't have such a dish, don't worry, check out the tips and tricks on our blog for other methods and ways to bake your bread. Now Balazs is going to decorate our village bread and then we're going to bake it. For a list of ingredients, methods, baking times and baking temperatures, please check the description or for a printable version, check our blog. Wow, this looks super impressive and it smells absolutely delicious. Really, really well done. Before we before we give this a try, can you can you give us a few tips and tricks about making bread and what we have to pay attention to, just so we get a beautiful result like yours? The most important thing, actually, it's uh, you have to use a, a, a very good quality of flour, flour mm -hmm. and you have to be patient, of course. Yeah. Because because it's a, it's a patience game, mm -hmm. and uh, you have to use the right temperature, the right humidity, and uh, so you, basically, can, you can easily get this result. So basically quality ingredients and be patient, take your time uh, and, and don't rush. Yeah. I think it's time to, to taste it, I can't wait, it smells really, really good. Do you want to cut us a piece for, uh, for the testing? Of course. Let's go. Smells absolutely amazing. So let, let's give it a try, yeah? Here we go, one piece each. Oh, I mean, look at this. Very nice texture. Yeah, texture. very nice texture. It smells really, it smells very different than the bread from the, that we usually buy or make. There's no yeast in this, so the, the smell is totally, totally different. Let's give it a try. Mm. Nice, crunchy. Guys. I wish you could taste this. Super crunch on the outside, beautiful texture on the inside, and the flavor is like really, really good. Well, Ash, thank you very much for joining us and thank you for sharing the recipe with us. This is really, really great. It tastes absolutely amazing. We are back next Wednesday with another recipe on Urban Treats. If you like our videos, make sure you subscribe and ring that bell button so that you're up to date and you can get our notifications every Wednesday. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.